We'll be beginning in just a few moments, still waiting for uh, another uh, member to join us. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'm John Quincy, Chair of the Ways and Means Committee, and uh, this is the regularly scheduled meeting. We'll just call that to order, joined by Council Members Bender, Palomasano, and Yang. And so we are a quorum, so we can do the committee's work today. Uh, we have uh, two public hearings, and uh, followed by a number of items that I'll just read through first. 23 total items on our agenda today. The first several items, one through Six are all various legal settlements. Oh, and Council Vice President Glidden, as well as Council Member Andrew Johnson. We have those uh, from the City Attorney's Office. City Clerk brings forward a grant application to the Council on Library and Information Resources. We also have the City Coordinator bringing forward a memorandum of understanding for the City Coordinator's Office to work with What Works Cities. Finance and Property Services has a number of items. The item number nine is the lease for office space at 519 Grove or Oak Grove Street. That's for MPD Employee Assistance Program. We also have a contract amendment with Wilson Development Services, uh, as well as an acquisition of four properties for the East Side Storage and Maintenance Facility. Item number 12 is an amendment to the Investment Management Agreement with RBC Global Asset Management. And item number 13 is a contract with Meadowbrook Insurance Group for workers' comp adjusting services. The Intergovernment Relations Department brings forward a contract amendment with the Lockridge, Grindle, and Allen. And we also have from the Community Development and Regulatory Services Committee a contract with uh, Doherty and Company LLC to serve as municipal advisor for the Common Bond Fund. We also have um, referred from the Health, Environment, and Community Engagement Committee, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration grants for voluntary national retail food regulatory program standards. Public Safety, Civil Rights, and Emergency Management Committee brings forward item number 17, which is a sex trafficking investigations grant acceptance from the Minnesota Department of Public Safety, as well as a contract amendment with SMG for police uh, department SWAT services, uh, as well as uh, bomb squad and 911 dispatch services and perimeter security. All those are with SMG uh, for perimeter at, at U.S. Bank Stadium. Transportation Public Works Committee brings forward the I-35W and Lake Street Transit Access Project, which is project approval, uh, assessment, and areaway abandonment. Uh, item number 22 is the 42nd Street, or excuse me, 47th Avenue North um, reconstruction project. And we have the application for Hennepin County Bicycle and Sidewalk Grant Funds. Uh, and that's item number 23. Are there any questions from members on items 3 through 23? Not seeing any, I'll move all those items. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Uh, that Those all carry. Thank you very much. Which brings us to our public hearing schedule. Um, Mr. Ruff, we have the first item, which is a real estate exchange. Are you handling that, Mr. Ruff? 
Mr. Chair, members of the committee, I'm Mark Ruff, uh, Chief Financial Officer for the City. I have a quick presentation for the Council just on background on this uh, property exchange. Uh, <coughs> as the committee is well aware, uh, the City has a very dispersed uh, set of properties where our, uh, in the downtown core especially, where employees reside, uh, the main office employees being within City Hall, and just a reminder that the, the county occupies 40% of this building, and so um, much of our staff resides in the City of Lakes and the Public Service Center immediately to the northwest. And then CPED, substantial number of employees in the far upper right-hand side of this chart in the Crown Roller Mill. I have staff in all of those areas. I know employees spend a great deal of time uh, coming back and forth, some people in CPED, three or, three or four times a day for meetings. Um, that you know, leads to some inefficiencies, certainly uh, uh, loss of productivity, and then also just for visitors, I think it's a, it sometimes is a confusing situation to know which building to be going to. Um, back in 1999, the City Council did direct staff to uh, cease any major investments in the City of Lakes and the Public Service Center. Those are 1950s era buildings. Uh, and there was a plan back even in the late 90s to start consolidation of office space. Um, but given the state aid losses and some of the other um, budget cuts that occurred over the over the last 15 years, really that action had not been taken on any kind of consolidation. Um, at this point in time, we also are showing the first precinct and the fire station on on this particular map. But we um, we are not anticipating any uh, any immediate changes to the uh, staffing of those particular um, pieces of property. Or nor are we proposing to consolidate. Although the fire station is under consideration for that. This slide just uh, really repeating what I had highlighted in the previous slide. <clears throat> so in 2014 was the time where the um, City Council and through an executive committee of council members, Council Member Quincy certainly on that committee along with the Mayor's office, uh, Council Member Fry, Council Member Goodman, uh, uh, had uh, worked with JLL, an outside firm, to look at a variety of sites on this particular charter of all of the sites that were uh, investigated. Some of them are privately owned, some were uh, leased space, uh, but um, out of those 13 choices that were narrowed down in 2015, um, in 2016, the City Council did endorse the Government Center ramp as the as the new facility. Um, as a part of that action that, that you took last uh, summer was uh, the authorization to hire two key consultants. One is the owner's representative, which serves both as a project manager, manager and then overseeing construction on the City's behalf. That was CPMI, that's the same firm that has been working on the capital renovation for the state of Minnesota. And then also Perkins and Will was hired um, as the architect for the program design, not for the exterior design of the building, but in terms of who, where would we move all of these employees, what would be the most efficient use of space within City Hall and within the new building. Um, and, and then also uh, to be working with us in particular, just setting the vision for the building. And, Perkins and Will came up with these uh, two statements that are down below that I think adequately describe what the reason that we're undertaking this, these uh, new improvements. Uh, the first really being to, to reduce our overall footprint of real estate in the, in the city and to, um, to improve service to the public as well as just meeting the needs of uh, current and future employees. <clears throat> One of the Good parts about this particular project is that we have a great variety of resources that will be available to pay for any new building. Um, we did have an allocation in the 2017 budget for these consultants, which can be carried forward to future debt service. In addition, we will be um, uh, eliminating leases. We are leasing privately 90,000 square feet, and we have another 159,000 square feet that the city owns. Um, and so we will be eliminating those costs. That's over $3 million a year that we spend on operating costs and leases uh, for those facilities. So those will help offset any future debt service costs. The land sales will be selling the public service center in the city of Lakes after we vacate those. So those will certainly help offset costs of this building as well as having new property tax revenues from those buildings. We estimate the new construction to be between 150 and 200 million to replace what were those very small and outdated city facilities. Um, and also we have other bond issues which will be expiring over the next five years and so we can layer in new debt service without seeing a property tax increase. Um, so overall those efficiency gains also that um, we'll be discussing a little bit later in the, in the presentation just in terms of uh, how effective our workforce are, is and then what the benefits are to the public as well. 
since the middle of 2016 and working with these consultants and internally with staff, really proximity and visibility emerged as, as even more important factors. Um, the government center ramp uh, site was, was convenient. We own the facility. Um, it's an older facility built in the early 1970s, but it is on the backside of that block. Um, it's a larger parcel, which is a little bit hard to configure. And just as the council went through the effort during the last budget uh, season here at the end of 2016 in terms of improving how easy it is for small businesses and citizens to navigate our regulatory uh, uh, structure here in the city, I think we also recognize that just for the average person to walk into a city facility and not know where to go, it sometimes can be very confusing. And so just that it, issue of proximity and visibility really did Im, um, impress upon us the need to look for a few other options. Um, that government center ramp as a review is an acre and a half. It's just over 1,300 stalls. So out of the discussion with uh, many of you, um, in terms of the exploration of other sites, what emerged as a viable option was the what is commonly known as the Opus ramp. I think Opus was the original uh, firm that constructed that ramp uh, and then sold it to Interpark, uh, which is a national parking firm. That's an acre in size. It has 974 stalls built in the early 90s. It's the same size as what Ryan's new office building that's being built on the backside of the Wells Fargo is. It's just um, uh, that building will be smaller, I think 170,000, 175,000 square feet. That's limited by the windows in the Wells Fargo, so they can't go higher than the four stories. We would not have that same limitation on this particular site. Um, just so everyone's familiar um, in terms of what that ramp actually looks like as we're um, facing east from the government center plaza. So in looking at this option, there were several uh, pieces of due diligence, and I really want to commend the internal staff that we have as as the city. This uh, proposal was brought forth without any brokers being used. It was just directly uh, with uh, Nikki Newman uh, from the city attorney's office, John Wirtches from Public Works, and Chuck Lux was a big help, as well as, um, as our property services staff, Rebecca Law. Uh, and so we undertook s several components of a feasibility study and a due diligence, the first being hiring mutually with uh, Interpark, a third-party engineering study of the of uh, the government center ramp that we owned, because no one was exactly sure how much money was needed to put into that facility to keep it running over the long term. We also undertook an appraisal to get to make sure that what was being offered to us was fair market value. Um, Public Works, as a part of the action in 2016, in July, the City Council did ask Public Works to look at the impact of reducing the number of parking spaces in downtown and what that impact would be in terms of availability for um, business owners. John Wirtschus is here and certainly for visitors and business owners can give you Public Works opinion on just reduction of almost a thousand parking spots. Um, and then we also did, because we had Perkins and Will on uh, on retainer already, we did ask them to do an architectural comparison for the two sites just to make sure that that one acre smaller site still met with what we saw as the needs of the city. Um, the good news is, is that we passed the test on all of those particular due diligence for this particular site, which is the reason that we're in front of you as this option. Um, the term sheet that was included in your packet, the summary is, is that um, Urban Growth Properties, which is the subsidiary of uh, Interpark, will pay the city just over six and a half million dollars. Um, that is after we've reduced what they need to put in over the future years to improve that to be a viable structure. Um, and that is higher than the appraised value. Our appraised value actually came in at 18,500 per stall. And the price that Interpark is paying us is 19,830. So given the number of stalls, that's over $400,000 higher than the appraised value. Um, the part of this transaction, um, Interpark will be leasing the government center ramp from us, the city garage as it's called in the documents, uh, for approximately one year and then we'll pay us a minimum of $2 million plus a, a split of the Super Bowl revenues that have yet to be negotiated. Um, in turn, we, ch we will promise not to build public parking in our new building. Part of the reason they're willing to pay us a premium is because we will not be direct competition on the same block, although there certainly is plenty of competition in the nearby area. And then the city will pay a portion of the closing cost as well as um, just basic state and federal mandated relocation for the one tenant and uh, cell towers that are in that facility. 
think overall why we're pursuing this, um, you know, there's an advantage of the of the of this ramp, and just in terms of as we said, proximity and visibility. Um, we have heard from people in addition to taking the stalls out of uh, out of uh, circulation for some of the downtown businesses and visitors. We've had people ask us why can't the city find a cheaper site for its office building, recognizing the city needs this office facility that we're going to have to spend large amount of money if we renovated our existing buildings and we think it's a better investment over the 50 to 100 years that we'll be using this new building um, to look at a new structure and allow those other spaces spaces being those other um, lots um, in the downtown core to be developed privately um, and so when we look at the long view uh, we may be able to have a cheaper site by going someplace else downtown um, maybe by 10 to 15 million dollars um, in terms of a cheaper site. We don't think that's cheaper in the long term. And in fact, we think it's much more expensive when you factor in um, these issues of being able to share facilities with City Hall, uh, to have this proximity and clarity for the visitors, um, as well as the higher tax revenues from an undeveloped site. And really, I think the question we have to ask ourselves is a parking ramp over the next 50 to 100 years, the highest and best use in terms of on the government center square as well. Um, it's always helpful for me being the finance person to look at numbers. So those are concepts. Um, but one of the things also the council asked us to look at in the middle of 2016 was what is the actual projected property tax revenue that we would see from development on the city of lakes building. Um, and we estimate that that's going to be north of a million and a half dollars a year just for the city taxes. That's not including the taxes that will be going into the county and the school district um, as well as um, fiscal disparities. Uh, in addition, we did put some metrics to how much savings we see in terms of actual dollars and when you measure how many minutes um, per day can be measured per employee as well as minutes per day saved by having this clarity and proximity um, for visitors um, and that again is not a huge number out of this but it certainly adds to it as well and the fact that we don't have to rent other for example conference facilities for people in this building when we have a building that will be right next door that we can share those types of facilities so we see um, a benefit of this site every year of almost $2 million. That's contrasted with, um, if we went with a cheaper site, as I said, the one-time savings up front of, of um, up to $15 million, um, you know, that would add debt service of just under $900,000 per year. So overall, we see this to be a, certainly a benefit. Um, I would also say that for those who recognize that there will be some loss of parking revenue to the city, Again, those property taxes um, at over uh, $1.6 million per year. Right now, for the appraisal, when you factor in what we are projected to make and then take out what our maintenance, maintenance cost would be by owning that facility over the next 20 to 30 years, that um, appraisal used a million four in net revenue. So just alone, the property tax revenues um, from the City of Lakes building and the uh, and the uh, public service center will be more than what we're losing over the long term. Again, looking at it over a 50 year time period. So certainly um, in terms of this particular site and this action in front of you, you're not being asked to vote on a new office building. You're just being asked to vote on a site. We will continue to work with Perkins and we'll come back to the council later this spring with some options for you to consider. Um, but we do see all of these factors as being a direct benefit of this particular uh, site. And, uh, and even more importantly, I think um, the efficiency in terms of the sustainability for a new building here compared to what we have today, and also resiliency, a term that's being used more and more, as you're aware, the city is hiring a chief resiliency officer uh, based on a grant that we are receiving. And resiliency meaning that in times of crisis, we know we have a place that will operate and be able to serve our citizens. And we have the EOTF, but um, we don't have a place for um, certainly our city employees uh, that are going to be with the IT services, um, portions of our police and fire to have a secure place where they can have office use and being able to function over a three or four day period when we have those, those weather events of, um, that may cause disruption in services. And so we see multiple benefits both for this site and for um, the office building as a whole. So the next steps um, in terms of schedule, we don't anticipate coming back until um, later this year with some actual RFPs for architects for the external part of this building as well as the construction delivery period. We'd ex still expect to start construction in, uh, before uh, June of 2018 and finish in 2020 if the council decides to proceed at those times.
certainly be happy to answer any questions, but that's a general overview on the building as it sits right now, as well as the recommendations for the, ex the exchange that will enable the site on the directly uh, across from the government center square. Very good. Thank you very much, Mr. Ruff. Are there any questions for Mr. Ruff before we conduct the public hearing portion of this? Not seeing any. <clears throat> we'll begin uh, the public. I'll open the public hearing then. If there's anybody here to speak on this topic? Anyone? Anyone? Not seeing any. I'll close the public hearing and uh, move approval of this item as presented. Um, are there any questions or further discussion on that? Not seeing any discussion, but I can only attribute that to the uh, complete and thorough uh, presentation, Mr. Ruff. Thank you very much for the work. Really uh, appreciate the work that the uh, consultants have brought in by meeting with various departments along the way and really getting an understanding of the uh, benefits for the public as well as our uh, own employees and operations. So thank you very much for that. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. That carries. We have the second uh, public hearing, <clears throat> Mr. Ruff. Is that sound a, another real estate transaction? Hi. You're not Mr. Ruff. Welcome. Not today. Not today. <laughs> um, my name is Rebecca Law. Ms. Law, please. And Thank you. I'm a project manager with the Finance and Property Services. Item two that you have before you is a real estate transaction for the benefit of the East Side Maintenance and Storage Facility. During the preliminary designs for that facility, we discovered that there were some pinch points that kept us from fully utilizing the site. Um, and so we began discussions with the adjacent neighbor, which is Acorn Mini Storage. And those discussions have led to the proposal in front of you, which is that we would buy a small uh, sliver that Acorn Mini Storage owns next to our land that they don't need. Uh, the price is at 350 per square foot, which is consistent with the appraisal that we got. And we would also just do a real estate exchange um, of two little parcels that are similar in size, but that would help uh, both owners round out the boundaries of their property so that both could be used more efficiently. So um, we are asking for consent to these transactions, and I am available for any questions that you have. Thank you very much, Ms. Law. Any questions for staff on this particular item? Not seeing any. Thank you very much. I'll open the public hearing on item number two, the real estate transactions <clears throat> uh, associated with 340 27th Avenue Northeast. Anybody? Anyone? Not seeing anyone. I'll close the public hearing and move this item for approval. Any further discussion on that? Not seeing any. All those in, fa in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That item carries. Thank you very much, Ms. Long. And seeing no further business, we are adjourned.